Hi everybody, this is God Sad for the Sad Truth. There are all sorts of reasons that people despise evolutionary theory in general, and evolutionary psychology in particular. In my 2011 trade book, The Consuming Instinct, in chapter 1, I list nine uh, ubiquitous arguments against evolution slash EP. EP stands short for evolutionary psychology, and then I offer rebuttals. Uh, I've since added to that list, which I might cover in a future clip, but I thought that for today I'll go over uh, those nine arguments and offer the rebuttals here. So here we go. Argument one for why Darwinian theory or evolutionary theory is bad, evil, wrong, a Zionist plot. So number one, Darwinian theory is ideologically dangerous as evidenced by the number of Cretans who have misused it to advance their criminal and nefarious ideologies. So it has often happened uh, that people usurp evolutionary theory uh, in the pursuit of their nefarious ideologies. So for example, the Nazis argued that, hey, there is a natural struggle between the races. Uh, we are the Aryan race. Uh, we are on top of the hierarchy. Jews and gypsies and homosexuals and so on are the losers in that evolutionary uh, struggle, and therefore, hey, what's wrong with getting rid of them? It's Darwinian. Of course, it has nothing to do with Darwinian theory, but it is a political ideology that uses uh, evolutionary theory to somehow justify uh, their genocidal hatred of particular groups. It, of course, has nothing to do with evolutionary theory. Going back earlier to social Darwinism, uh, British social class elitists argued, look, there's a struggle between uh, different social classes. We are the upper class. Uh, we won. Uh, therefore, who cares about the lower classes in terms of giving them food and education and so on? There's a natural hierarchy. And hey, that's Darwinian. Of course, has nothing to do with Darwinian theory. But again, folks are misappropriating uh, Darwinian principles in the pursuit of their pet ideology. Uh, eugenicists uh, made similar arguments. Hey, we have the right to control who gets to reproduce or not. Uh, if you're somehow undesirable, according to our calculus, well, then we're going to uh, sterilize you. That way, your genes cannot propagate. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. That's Darwinian theory. It's okay. And so because of all of these Cretans who misused or misapplied or misappropriated evolutionary theory, then there was this strong repulsion toward anything biological, toward anything that has that uses evolutionary theory to explain human affairs. And so it becomes this uh, meme of idiocy or this memeplex of idiocy where people somehow associate uh, evolution with the Nazis and with all sorts of uh, evil people. Of course, uh, completely wrong. As a matter of fact, there have been, there is at least one study that I'm aware of uh, where they actually looked at the political leanings of people who are studying to be evolutionary psychologists and as you might expect they tend to be uh, very liberal as is the case for most academics and so even an empirical test of this stupidity uh, fails to be supported so darwinian theory evolutionary theory has nothing to do with nazis has nothing to do with eugenesis and so on and yet people uh, reject evolutionary theory for these erroneous links number two Evolutionary theory amounts to biological determinism, namely evolutionists believe that our genes usurp our free will. Basically, if, if you offer some evolutionary argument for something, then people think that you're just a automaton who's simply executing whatever our genes tell us to do. Of course, this is profoundly incorrect. Uh, as I've explained previously in various forums and in many of my uh, writings, uh, evolutionists recognize that ev most of what we are is an interaction between our genes and our environment, right? Evolution itself happens within a particular niche, right? Genes get turned on or off as a function of environmental inputs. So, no, uh, arguing that something uh, is an evolutionary uh, imperative doesn't imply that it is biologically deterministic. Nothing could be further from the truth. I've even given an example, the cake metaphor, where you, when you're talking about nature versus nurture, 
uh, if you take a cake starting with with its original ingredients the baking soda the flour uh, the butter the eggs uh, each of these ingredients are separated then you bake the cake now you have the final cake if I were to ask you point to the eggs or point to the sugar you couldn't right the cake is an inextricable mix of all of those ingredients so no we are a product of both our nature and our nurture and the idea that evolution is biologically deterministic is extraordinarily idiotic and it's it only advertises that somebody who levies such an accusation knows nothing about biology and certainly nothing about evolution number three biological instincts and drives might be applicable when explaining the behaviors of animals however humans are first and foremost cultural beings there's actually a term uh, for this particular uh, idiocy uh, it's known as the human reticence effect i discovered this term this is not my term i discovered this term after having published uh, the consuming instinct uh, basically the idea is that people are perfectly comfortable ex using evolutionary theory to explain the behavior or the morphology of the salamander and the coyote and the zebra and the mosquito but don't you dare use the same evolutionary principles to explain human behavior and hence the human reticence effect we are reticent to explain uh, human phenomena using biology or evolutionary theory uh, or in some cases people are perfectly happy to use evolutionary theory to explain human phenomena as long as the human phenomena don't include anything above the neck this is uh, the, the bias I like to call evolution stops at the neck right uh, so opposable thumbs yes of course that could be explained via evolutionary theory but the most important organ defining our personhood which is our brain somehow exists somehow came to be through mysterious forces that were outside of evolution of course that's laughable number four evolutionary psychology or EP is strictly concerned with the cataloging of human universals meaning things that are the same across cultures while most social scientists are interested in understanding behavioral heterogeneity things that are different across people of course that's completely incorrect while it is true that evolutionary psychologists very much care about cataloging human universals they also care about understanding why individual differences exist why cross-cultural differences exist so for example in an earlier sad truth I explained cross-cultural differences in culinary in the use of uh, spices across culinary traditions right and that explanation is rooted in a clear biological problem right uh, cultures that that are in uh, warmer climates uh, where you're likely to have greater uh, path greater density of pathogens make greater use of spices because spices have an antimicrobial uh, property uh, and so you could explain cross-cultural differences also via evolutionary principles that's exactly what behavioral ecologists do so it is perfectly incorrect to think that all that evolutionary psychologists are concerned about are human universals that's simply not true the fifth one is probably the one that uh, angers me the most because this is the one that's actually levied by otherwise supposedly sophisticated educated academics uh, Darwinian theory or evolutionary theory or evolutionary psychology largely consists of unfalsifiable post hoc fanciful and elaborate just so stories I've already explained this in great details it is the exact opposite that is true uh, as a matter of fact I have a forthcoming paper in journal marketing research where I explain the epistemology of evolutionary psychology and it basically consists of if you like three big epistemological elements number one the recognition of the difference between proximate and ultimate explanations proximate explanations explain the how and what of a phenomenon whereas ultimate explanations explain the Darwinian why why uh, the mechanism would have evolved to be of that form uh, also I the second element is the building of uh, nomological networks of cumulative evidence so if you want for example to demonstrate that uh, toy preferences uh, are innate well you can use data stem stemming from extraordinarily varied disciplines to build a nomological network that makes it incontrovertible that sex specific toy preferences uh, certainly contain an, an innate element or if you want to show that uh, men have an evolved preference for a waist to hip ratio that corresponds to the hourglass figure 
again, you could, you could build a nomological network to demonstrate that. So if anything, evolutionary psychology is the exact opposite of what these buffoons typically argue. Uh, and the third element, by the way, is that evolutionary psychology builds these organized, consilient uh, trees of knowledge. Uh, in other words, uh, an inherent part of evolutionary theory is to recognize that there is sort of general principles uh, at, the, at the top of the tree, which then f leads to what are called middle-level theories, which then leads to, uh, you know, uh, other level, you know, uh, further theories and then to specific hypotheses at the root nodes of the tree. In other words, what makes biology, physics, chemistry uh, uniquely influential and much more so than the social sciences is because they have these organized trees of knowledge. And so by its very nature, evolutionary psychology relies on a very organized epistemology. Uh, next, another manifestation of buffoonery, number six. Darwinian theory amounts to believing in a godless universe. It is part and parcel of the growing atheist, secularist, and humanist movement. So here the idea, this is typically, of course, levied from religious folks who argue that, well, uh, you know, if evolutionary theory is right, if it's just this sort of cold, natural mechanism that results in the speciation of all of these different life forms, including humans, then where is God in this story, right? Now, of course, some religious folks will reconcile God with that story by saying, yes, evolution is correct, and it is God who put forth that mechanism, right? But in general, many people have this conspiratorial theory that uh, what lies underneath uh, the driving motive of every evolutionist is to sp spread secularism and atheism. And again, that's just complete idiocy. I mean, yeah, sure, we're all pretending to be scientists, but in reality, we're part of a uh, conspiracy of atheists. Maybe we're new atheists. Uh, so, of course, that's complete nonsense. Number seven, a very, very common one amongst the public at large, maybe friends of P.Z. Myers and some of his idiotic idiots. Idiotic idiots, you like that one. Uh, so, Darwinian theory is morally dangerous in that it provides explanations for reprehensible actions such as adultery, rape, and child abuse. So, for example, if you explain why uh, step parents are the number one variable that predicts the likelihood of there being child abuse in a home, and there are very clear evolutionary reasons why that might be the case, that doesn't mean that you are justifying child abuse. It doesn't mean that every step parent is an evil, maniacal child abuser. Uh, explaining a phenomenon doesn't imply that you condone the phenomenon or that you justify it. Uh, the analogy or the rebuttal that I usually offer to people who levy this accusation is right. So oncologists, somebody who studies pancreatic cancer, ultimately must be a nefarious uh, oncologist because he is justifying the existence of cancer. He is pro-pancreatic cancer, right? I mean, so it's a level of stupidity that's difficult to understand. And if you see, if you hear a hint of frustration in my voice, it's because these... Uh, accusations are truly immortal. It doesn't matter how often you address them, how often you dismantle them, how often you demonstrate that people who, who levy them are simply advertising their ignorance. They keep returning. The phoenix of stupidity rises yet again. Number eight, Darwinian theory posits that humans are brutish and selfish creatures engaged in an endless survival of the fittest. Of course, Nothing could be further from the truth. Yes, of course, humans can be brutish and competitive, and there are evolutionary reasons that can help us understand under which conditions uh, these realities might manifest themselves. But also, evolutionary psychologists study romantic love and sibling love and uh, altruism and uh, uh, empathy and all sorts of other laudable virtues. And so evolutionary psychologists recognize that uh, humans are a complex creature that are endowed both with uh, competitive urges and cooperative ones. And so, again, nothing could be further from the truth from that that is listed in point eight. And finally, number nine, providing a datum at the individual level 
that is contrary to a fact that holds true at the population level is sufficient to supposedly falsify a given evolutionary principle. This sounds like a mouthful, so let me try to explain it. So if I say that men are taller than women, that's an absolute fact. It's about as clear as the existence of gravity. We are a sexually dimorphic species along many traits, one of which is our size. Now, the fact that your Aunt Jenny is taller than your Uncle Bob doesn't imply that that which is true at the population level uh, is violated, is falsified, because you could identify an instance where that doesn't hold true, right? Uh, men prefer, on average, to mate with younger women, even though your Uncle Bob dates Aunt Jenny, who's five years older than him, right? Again, no one cares about your singular example. That doesn't suddenly trash the whole Darwinian edifice. Oh my God, WNBA players, female players, basketball players are taller than most men on earth. Darwin is dead. Back to the drawing board, evolutionists. So this is a, a very, very pervasive cognitive trap because the allure for most people is to identify what appears to be an instantiation of a violation of the, of the general phenomenon. And if you can generate that one phenomenon, then clearly evolution must be wrong. Nothing could be further from the truth. So I hope that I've given you some weaponry to tackle some of these uh, pervasive and never-ending attacks against evolution. As I said in a future clip, maybe I'll add to this list, but uh, hopefully for those of you who are not very familiar with evolutionary theory in general and evolutionary psychology in particular, uh, now have a better uh, understanding of some of these anti-evolution, anti-EP arguments, and subsequently the rebuttals to such arguments. Hope you've enjoyed this clip. Please share it if uh, uh, you've appreciated it. And again, uh, please realize that this takes a tremendous effort on my part, certainly in terms of time, uh, to put together these clips. I'm now averaging roughly one clip a day. Several hours a day I spend either booking guests or uh, speaking with guests, uploading, and so on. So if you can in any way support the channel, either by sharing the clips or via Patreon or and or PayPal, it would be much appreciated. Thanks, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.